He's saying that no matter what your burden is, no matter what your weariness is, no matter what is causing you to be troubled, Christ is saying that bring it to him. Give it to him. Trust him with it and he will give you rest and peace. That's what he's saying. No matter what your trouble is, what is causing you to be wary, anxious, fearful, what your bondage is, bring it to him and he will grant you rest and peace for your soul. The Lord is saying to us, to you and me, he's saying this morning that lay whatever is causing you to be wary mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, lay it down at his feet. Lay your burdens at his feet. Trust him. Put your faith in him. And in exchange, he will give you peace. So many are carrying heavy weights. Heavy, heavy weights of brokenness, addiction, guilt, bondage on their backs. Every day. But Jesus is saying, give it to me. Give it to me. Lay it down. And I will give you rest. And we have to understand one thing. This is not a man that's speaking. This is not a teacher that's speaking. It's not a prophet that's speaking. Think about this for a second. This is the creator of the universe. This is the Lord, God himself speaking. This is God speaking to us and saying, bring your burdens to me, trust me with it, take my yoke upon you, and I will give you rest. And yet, so often, we choose to hold on to those burdens and that weariness. There's a saying that goes that if you're angry with someone, if you are upset with someone, it's like you holding a hot piece of coal in your hand and expecting that person, the other person you're angry with, to be hurt. It doesn't work that way. Because that hot piece of coal, that anger you're holding, that malice you're holding toward that person, is only going to harm you. It's the same thing with this, what the Lord is saying. The weariness that we choose to hold on to, the, the burdens that we choose to hold on to, because we doubt the Lord, because we don't believe that the Lord can take care of our burdens, is only going to cause harm to us. And the Lord is saying, give it to me. Give it to me. So when we read Matthew 11, what is it telling us? It's saying to us that for us to find true rest in the midst of the weariness of life, for us to find real peace, divine peace, in the midst of all that's happening around us, there are two things that we need to do. There are two things that we need to do. Firstly, we have to come to Jesus. We have to come to the Lord himself and we have to place those weariness and those burdens before him in faith and trust and accept that there is no one else. There is no place else that we can find that peace but in him. No matter where people run to, no matter what we do, we will never find that rest if we are looking for that rest outside of Jesus. You will not find that fulfillment in relationships. You will not find it in your job. You will not find it in your wife or your husband or your children. You will find it first in Jesus. Christ cares about the weariness that you and I carry. He cares about the burden that we carry. He actually cares. He really cares. He looks at us with compassion. Do you know that? Every time we walk around in fear and worry, every time we walk around in brokenness or bondage, He cares. The Lord Jesus actually cares. And we see His nature, His compassion in Matthew 9, verse 36 to 38. Matthew 9, 36 to 38, what does it say? If I read from 35, it says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Verse 36, when he saw the crowds, 
Listen to this. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. Why? Because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus looks at the humanity. He looks at the brokenness. He looks at those addicted to gambling and alcohol and immorality. But he looks down with compassion. And he cares. And he's saying, lay those things down at my feet and I will give you peace. I will give you freedom. I will give you deliverance. But for some reason, humanity, we choose to hold on to those things that will destroy us and reject the thing that will give us life. And the ultimate display of that compassion and care is the fact that he died on the cross for us. No one else has died on the cross. No one else has given their life for, the, for, the, for humanity, the, for, you know, for those who believe in it, except Jesus. He died for the whole world, for the sins of the whole world, for the brokenness of the whole world. And yet we turn our backs and hold on to that which will destroy us. 